Testing, okay, good. All right, so my name is James Murph. Uh, I'm gonna be starting off the session. Uh, when I'm done, I'll be passing off to Adam here. I'm gonna be covering the data part of the talk, and Adam's gonna be covering the progressing part of the talk, and then we're gonna have a QA where we can kinda cross talk and offer different perspectives. So, I'm gonna start off. Just kidding. Before I start off, I'd actually like to thank a couple of people. Uh, I'd like to thank Resume Ranch because it's a development community I've been a part of for a couple of years and they're super supportive, very intelligent people. Um, I'd like to thank Daniel DeSico because he provided some much needed legal advice for the GDPR portion of the data part of this talk, which you'll find out why. And I'd also like to thank John Boy because He's done more than anybody to mainstream statistical analysis in sports and make stories that are really cool, just with chart party and all that kind of stuff. So, big inspiration for this talk. So, so you know, why do we watch esports? Like, why does any of us watch a sport, right? Well, we want to see players learn and succeed and get better at the game. Uh, sorry, hold on a second. We want to find interesting outliers and see the kind of the peak of human abilities and condition. And <clears throat> we like the sport and we want to learn more about how it works. So all of these answers tie into an underlying principle, uh, which is that people who watch sports want to experience the tension of competition without actually competing. This is going to be the uh, three takeaways for our talk. So, so, uh, sorry. You can see this reflection in how audiences perceive tension and what, how they get engaged in games by looking at how they react to routes and how they react to turnarounds. So, for example, let's take a famous route. Uh, this one was from the 2019 Super Bowl, which just happened, and. From what I hear, I'm not too much of a football guy, but this is a game that nobody enjoyed. <laughs> um, it kind of ended the way everybody thought it would. Uh, it was pretty even until the last part of the game. Nothing super interesting. Now, let's take that principle and turn it around. My favorite fighting game moment, I think the most people's, is Evil 37, where, you know, the parries, the drop kick in, the finish, Oh, it's so beautiful. And the reason why we get invested in those turnarounds is because it makes for great dramatic tension. It makes for people getting invested in those characters. If you know how much about the game and how it's going to turn out before it's played, like, you don't want to play it. There's a really good speech by Avery Books in DS9, and I'm a horrible nerd, so I'm going to share it with you. Every time I throw the ball, a hundred different things can happen in a game. A man can swing and miss, he might hit it. The point is, you never know. You try to anticipate threat strategies and game the possibilities as best you can, but in the end, it comes down to throwing one pitch after another and seeing which ha what happens. With each new consequence, the game begins to take shape. So, how can we use numbers and statistical data, which most people think are pretty boring, and use that to shape how people perceive our game? So, for a good example of ways you can use your data to make a player's success or failure more interesting or to drive up that dramatic tension, uh, there's poker. Sorry, I need to adjust this a little bit. Poker is a game of luck and bluffing. I'm, I'm fairly sure most of you are familiar with it. Um, a big thing about poker and watching it is you can't really tell like, who has a whole card or what position they're in if you don't have any of the extra information which is intentional on the part of the players because that's what's interesting about poker. That's where the skill is, is in bluffing people and trying to figure out what people are doing. But it's not terribly interesting to watch. So, with the invention of hand probabilities, which you can see there, that's uh, how likely the player is to win the hand given their whole cards and what's on the field. And then it updates in real time according to the cards that get played. And 
the whole cam, which actually tells you what players have in the home, which is how you do the hand probability and also